Hello guys, and welcome back to another uh, tutorial. Today we are going to be learning how to make a furnace, and um, now there is some things that you need to note. Uh, there isn't any way to do a animated progression bar just yet. Um, this might be a future, uh, a thing in the future, but not at this moment. Um, the other thing is um, the block particularly doesn't use the fuel sources that certain items already have. Um, this might be a little bit of a future pro problem for that I need to figure out on my own, but uh, for the most part uh, I can make a functional furnace. So import your textures. I have one animated front texture as well as two side textures. These are from 1.14. So we're just going to start with creating a basic block called a blast furnace and we're going to click OK. We need to select our side textures by selecting all of them by the blue square and then just updating the ones that we need. So that saves a little bit of time. And the only other thing on this page that we need to set is the block rotation mode. So this needs to be on y-axis rotation, southwest, northeast on player side right here. And moving to the next one, uh, the GUI name's already been inputted. Uh, we can leave the rock. Uh, we're gonna put this under decorations. Now the hardness for a regular furnace is 3.5 and the resistance is 17.5 for a regular furnace. It doesn't need gravity, uh, the block tick rate. Now, one second is um, exactly 20 ticks. So multiply 20 ticks by how many seconds you want it to take to smelt, uh, just to kind of give you an idea how long um, planks take, uh, give you for fuel, it's 15 seconds. So uh, that would be 300. Um, 300 ticks per update. So that's going to be important when actually making your furnace. Is you want to make it longer duration for smelting, then you would um, put that there, but it's going to take the about 300 seconds for it to cycle through. So the next thing that you need is to set the block map color. So this is going to be stone, and uh, we need to set the sound on step to stone. We don't need to mess around with any of these other settings outside of the dropping properties which uh, we need to lower the harvest level and select our tool and disable silk touch. So once that's done we can move over to the inventory tab. We need to enable the inventory. We need three inventory slots and we don't need comparator output data but we do need to set output slot two for our slot two for our output slot. Uh, procedures, we'll get back to that in just a little bit, but uh, right now we can basically compile that. Uh, they're doing some construction up above my uh, house. It's not half as bad as it was just a few moments ago, but um, for the most part, I just have to tolerate it, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, so GUI, uh, we're going to make a GUI and then blast furnace. Now we need to in link the inventory together with the block. So we're going to do that like we did with the uh, inventory for a regular inventory of um, storage and stuff. So we're gonna just select our block that we want and then we're gonna enable the snap to grid components or snap components to grid on grid on the grid and uh, we're going to need to limit our item that we're going to be using for fuel so I'm going to select uh, wooden planks and select that and then we're going to have our fuel slot as zero this is important so make sure it's zero and we're going to place that down right here and we need slot one for our um, smelting slot. So all these settings are perfectly fine. We're gonna put that right there. Uh, we need one output slot. This is gonna be output two. 
and there is going to be some additional things that we need to do with this uh, for the one item taken out of inven from its slot we need to add a procedure if we go to player components and then select uh, add five experience to provided player we're going to do that and we're going to save and then we're going to go and add the when transfer from slot shift clicked and we're going to add the exact same thing so back to player components and then we're going to add five experience and then save so once that's done we can uh, save the in uh, the uh, slot and place it down right here uh, I like to have a label for all my inventories so I'm going to set that up right now okay so I'm just gonna call it blast furnace and I'm gonna set the color to 40 40 40 and that will bring it to 64 on the uh, RBG scale and then we're going to place that down right about there and then we're going to save and now what we need to do is go back to our block and we're going to go to our procedures set up a right click event and uh, we're going to go and go back to player tab open GUI from provi for per the provided uh, player and then we're going to just select our furnished UI and once that's done we need to go to the update tick and uh, now if you go to templates and then scroll down uh, there should be a furnace GUI uh, it's called GUI template furnace and then you're going to select that now we're going to make some alterations to this particular code. Um, I noticed that there was some problems with multiple item selection and stuff like that uh, when testing, so I am going to quickly fix that up. Uh, we're just going to expand the code right here. We're actually going to move the furnace crackle sound down below here, and we're going to get rid of these. And we're actually going to duplicate, uh, not this line, not that line, not that one, but this one right here. We're going to duplicate that. We're going to set this to uh, and. We're going to delete this one right here, and we're going to place that right there. So what this is going to do is it's um, going to basically run your entire uh procedure system for your crafting recipes and stuff like that. I'll, I'll do a breakdown right now and uh, explain how all of it works. So the first one is testing for two conditions. Um, we'll get into the second part in a second, but it's going to uh, take a little bit more than just explaining uh, how everything works. But uh, for the first part, it's uh, going to get the number of items in slot 2, or output slot, and it's going to make sure that it's not equal to, because the cross through the equal sign is not equal to, 64. And the other condition that is required is these two. Uh, so the first one up here is it's getting the slot from inventory 0, which is our fuel slot, so we need to set that up and we're going to select the item that is restricted to. So this is going to be planks. And the slot one is our actual smelting slot. So it's requiring both of these items as well to be in the inventory. So we're just going to set this up to be iron ore. And the other condition that's happening is down here. So these two things are uh, one or the other because it's an ore statement. So the first one, it's going to be testing for if the items are equal to or less than 63 uh, in slot 2. So in slot 2 is our output slot, right? So if there is already 63 or equal to 63 or less than um, of the same item, then it's going to basically output that. But we need to make sure that it's the right item. So we're going to make sure that 
we select the inventory item that we have in that particular slot. That's why we needed to duplicate it because we also want to test to see if there's error in it as well. So if there isn't this particular item in the inventory, then we want to test to see if there's error in the inventory. So we're going to select this. And what this is going to do is if the inventory has, say, another item in it, uh, say a gold ignit in the um, output slot, we don't want to replace that particular item. So we need to either test for error or the same particular item that it's going to be smelting. If not, we don't want it to do anything. So if all that comes out as being true, then what's going to happen is it's going to remove one item from the uh, fuel slot, remove one item from the smelting slot, and then it's going to set slot 2 uh, plus 1 items. So it's going to get the amount of items in the output slot, may it be empty or full. Um, as long as it's 63 or under and it's going to be the same item as what we put under the um, testing item right here so it's going to need to be the same as this the second thing is um, we're just going to be playing the sound here and that's all there is uh, this is the sound for the furnace crackling and uh, if we wanted to add another recipe, all we need to do is duplicate this, stick it down below, and um, update the block for the uh, crafting recipe, like the uh, ore. And we need to update both output items. So I'm going to select this one, and we're going to select this one. Where is it? items there we go so this will basically run the proper furnace script that you need all this will be in the workspace below uh, so you guys can um, or you know the file zip that I provide all the te textures files uh, procedures and workspaces etc so uh, I'll leave that in the link for the page on my website so let's go into game and test this out and we'll see how it all works. So we're now in game and we're going to go under decorations tab. We're going to select our blast furnace. We're going to test the rotation to make sure that everything works. And then we're going to place it down. We're going to grab some oak planks and we're going to need some gold and iron ore. And then we're going to right click on it to see if the inventory opens. Sure enough it does. This is a little bit off. We could have probably lowered that a little bit. I'm going to stick... Uh, we'll stick eight planks in here. We'll put two um, iron in that particular slot. And as you can see it's smelting it just fine. We'll just take another second to smelt. About 15 seconds okay so if we start switching up the inventory now if you were to use that default script uh, what would happen is it wouldn't or it would basically replace this and add an additional number onto it so we didn't want that uh, what this is going to do is basically the new procedure system is testing to see if there's anything in the output slot here and if there is something that it's not going to smelt anything unless it's empty. So this would be considered air. And um, as you can see, it's saying, okay, well, we can smelt that now. And um, the vice versa, if we put the iron in, it won't work either if there's gold ignits in here. So hopefully you guys found that per particular tutorial useful. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, let me know what you liked about it rate the video and uh, I'll provide the workspace, um, the, the zip with all the workspaces and files and stuff like that in the description below. So definitely tune in next time. Next week we'll be working on how to create a crafting table, so definitely tune in for that. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching.